Hello everyone, I am Narc Survivor. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Before I begin, please hit the thumbs up button down below. Hit subscribe and click all notifications to be notified when I upload a new video. And if you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, just go to my website. It is narcsurvivor.co.uk. Watch this before the narcissist misleads you. Narcissists are very manipulative and deceptive. They will cause you to have a wrong idea and impression about them. They will give you breadcrumbs. They will string you along. They will mislead you deliberately over a length of time about their motives and intentions. Because they already know what you want to see. They've studied you in depth. So they're able to reflect back to you an image of your ideal person, even though that's not really who they are, and it's not really what they're about. But they're able to perform a series of deliberate actions and responses, planned for a psychological effect on you, to where you think you've met the type of person that you're looking for, when really it's just for their own amusement and competitive advantage. They're not who they're presenting themselves to be. But they're able to do this by learning your likes and dislikes, your desires, wants and needs, and whatever makes you sad, happy, angry or upset. They're learning all of these things about you, so that they're able to create this illusion, this deceptive appearance and impression, which causes you to hold false ideas and beliefs. And it's why when they first targeted you, they acted happy, overjoyed, thrilled and ecstatic as though they were interested in you and they were so glad to meet you. So you answered all of their questions and you told them everything about yourself. But they weren't happy or enthusiastic about you at all. They were just collecting information on you to use against you at a later date. Which is why it was only a matter of time until they began to present these things to you to see how you were reacting to them. They were giving you all of these compliments and it made you feel good about yourself. Which is all they needed because it's all a game. It's what gives them their thrill. It's what makes them feel alive. As though they're special and unique. They talk to you in an emotional way in the beginning but it's not sincere. It's done in order to gain your attention, validation, admiration or sympathy. Which is why they later give it out slowly until they take more and more away from you, until you're at their mercy, you're completely in their clutches, because you've been given and given, but you're getting very little back in return. And this is how they always have the upper hand, because when you're dealing with them, you're being you, while they're just being who they think will be most appealing to your desires. So you don't even assess their character. You just assume that they are who they say they are, and then you give them everything. To where they're then able to move skillfully and carefully through your mindset and emotions. And carefully guide and manipulate you in order to achieve their desired end. Without bringing attention to who they really are. Because they're showing you what you want in a partner. And it causes you to naturally enter an emotional state. To where you're wanting to cooperate and comply with their requests. But you're not thinking logically or rationally. So you overlook the red flags. Because they're stimulating your ego. You don't even see who they actually are. Because you're having lots of fun and you're enjoying yourself. But you're doing it with someone who doesn't even exist. Because they've just constructed a character based on your likes and desires. Knowing that you will accept and support them willingly and enthusiastically. And without judgement. Which is exactly what they want. Because that's what their false character is designed to do. They create this false character so that it gets all of the fame, honour and praise. Which feeds them. It gives them narcissistic supply. It makes them feel good about themselves. But it only has a short amount of time. Before it begins to deteriorate and expire. Until it starts to become excessively greedy, piggish selfish and arrogant because they have these insatiable desires that can never be fulfilled so they will always demand more than what they're given in return 
because they're only giving you a fake character. And behind that is something very wicked and evil. Because underneath it all, they are a narcissist. And some people believe that beneath the surface of the false self is this weak and delicate, underdeveloped child self. But even when the false self collapses, they're still corrupt and dishonest. They may act vulnerable, but even then it's just an act. Because beneath that is an evil, wicked predator, not a vulnerable, scared child. Which is why they will give you just enough to catch you in their trap. But then they will become excessively greedy, where they will reveal their intense and selfish desires. Because when they're giving you the false self, it's very draining for them. It depletes them of what little energy they have, and it disturbs their mind. Which is why they don't like to use the false self for long periods of time. Because it makes them very tired. Which is why as soon as they manage to turn the tables on you, they will reveal just how needy and desperate they really are. When initially they seemed so self-sufficient, as though they needed no outside help in satisfying their own needs, and they were emotionally and intellectually independent, self-reliant, self-supporting and self-sustaining, as though they had everything together and they always knew how to take care of themselves. But this character is now nowhere to be found. And instead what you do see is someone who requires excessive amount of attention, validation, money, energy and resources. Which they want all for themselves. And this is when they fail to care or provide for you. And they neglect and abandon you. Because they lack the capacity to keep giving. They can only love bomb you for a short period of time. Otherwise it would burn them out. Because it's not who they really are. Which is why they have to change you into becoming their workhorse and their slave. Where you're forced to work for and obey them. And you're considered to be their property. And all you get in return is this unenthusiastic fake gratitude. Because you can feel it in their energy. That they're not really grateful for it. Which causes you to realise how much you're losing by trying to raise them to a higher position and fill them with hope and optimism. Because normally they're stuck in a state of depression where they experience a persistent feeling of sadness and a loss of interest. Which is why they're so needy and it's why they're constantly taken from you because they can't sustain themselves. They can't keep it going on their own and all they have to give to you is breadcrumbs. They have nothing of value to bring to you. And yet you keep feeling like you have to do more. Because of the beginning when they give it this false character. So it keeps you holding on. Because you might think that they're going to reveal this character again. And then start to give it back to you. Or that they're just going through a difficult time. When this is actually just who they really are. This is them for life. What you saw in the beginning was only designed to lure you in and trap you. Because they know they're cheating you and treating you unfairly. They know they're giving you less than you deserve. Because at the beginning they made it seem like you were getting into something that was going to benefit you. But then it became badly organised and pleasant and full of confusion. Until you began to realise that they're nothing like what they said they were. Because the false character has vanished. They can't sustain that false character for long periods of time. Which is when you then realise that you were tricked into being their caretaker. To give them physical and emotional care and support. And at the time you thought you were doing the right thing. Because you thought this was your ideal person. Which is why you then feel dissatisfied, disappointed and defeated. When you realise that they're not as good as they led you to believe. Because you were dealing with something that was very different to what they initially portrayed to you. Which is how you ended up being neglected. Because you were deceived. You were tricked. It was all a game. But you were unaware of it at the time. While the narcissist knew exactly what they were doing. You were taking it seriously with the intent to succeed. 
while they were just playing to improve their circumstances. They came into it with all of this knowledge and they acted like they knew what they were doing. But their situation was unstable. They had no stability or consistency, which are two qualities that are needed to sustain a relationship. And it's why everything began to fall apart. Because when you're in a relationship, you should be dealing with someone who is on your level. Or at least, someone who is not far off. Someone who at least knows how to take care of themselves. Because if they can't take care of themselves, how are they going to be able to take care of you? A relationship is supposed to be a partnership. It can't just be one person doing all of the work. So both partners in the relationship need to be at a similar level or else one of them is going to be getting the short end of the stick and they're not going to be able to sustain the relationship on their own. Sometimes you've just got to stop and look at what you're putting out and realise that you never cheated them or treated them unfairly or given them an, an insufficient exchange of value. So you should expect something of equal value in return because your value is not determined by what you keep to yourself. It's determined by what you're giving out. But that's how they've been treating you. They've been cheating you by giving you an insufficient amount of value in return and giving you less than you deserve. Because at the beginning, they gave you a false character, a fabrication that they were unable to live up to. Which is why you need to reassess your situation. Because you need to be around people who pour into you just as much as you pour into them. People who spend the time with you and invest the energy, money and resources into you. And fill you up with all of the wisdom and knowledge that they have to give. With the idea of making you successful. Rather than just depleting you of everything you are and of everything you have. A narcissist cannot survive in that type of environment because they're not about achieving and maintaining equilibrium. They're not about balance, stability and equality and it's because they're never calm or composed in their minds. Which is why if you ever have a problem, need or difficult situation they're not going to be there for you. They don't respect boundaries because they have a sense of entitlement and they feel superior to other people. So they think limits and boundaries are beneath them. They lack empathy. So they're incapable of caring about another person. And they view it as perfectly reasonable to violate your boundaries if it gets them what they want. They're unlike a normal person which is how they're capable of doing such horrific things and it's what makes them so dangerous. They have unmet emotional needs from childhood. They're essentially a two-year-old child in an adult's body, so their world is centered around themselves. All they can think about is what they want and need, which is why any time you talk about your wants or needs, it will cause a narcissistic injury and they will rage and throw these temper tantrums. Because they have an arrested psychological development. They don't understand boundaries. They just see something they want. And all they can think about is how they're going to get it. Your feelings, wants and needs never even cross their minds. Because their world centres around themselves. So they are incapable of caring or considering you. You're just a tool for them to use as they please. And if they're not allowed to violate your boundaries, they will feel attacked. Because in their minds, you are then violating their boundaries. Because they view you as their possession. They feel entitled to you. So anything you have, whether it's your time, energy or attention, money or resources, qualities or characteristics, are all up for grabs to a narcissist. They're interchangeable. They can take it, use it and do whatever they like with it. Because they view people as extensions of themselves. And in fact, they view the entire world and everything in it as an extension of themselves. Which is why they regard the needs of other people as less important. And they feel entitled to whatever they desire 
and from whoever they desire it from. And it's because in their childhood they didn't get what they wanted. Their emotional needs were left unmet. But as well as this, they may also have been a spoiled brat, which is why they exhibit behavioural problems from being overindulged by their parents and from being accustomed to always getting their demands and desires met without experiencing consequences, which is why they now display entitled behaviour and they throw tantrums, and they even display a lack of gratitude or appreciation for the things they have been given. They have decreased grey matter of the brain, which is the brain area responsible for discerning interoceptive and associated effective information about ourselves and other people. So they do not wish to change or enter the world of boundaries. They lack the appropriate neurology for compromising, sharing and respecting the needs of other people because they never developed it as a child. Narcissists are permanently brain damaged, which is why they now have the unstoppable compulsion to get what they want. And it's why they have to be the boss and not you. But their mentality is also quite contradictory because they're forced to find an adult who is willing to pamper and spoil them and to let them get away with their abusive behaviour. Narcissists will never learn to respect boundaries because they don't need to. They just trap people like you in their web of lies and deception knowing that you won't enforce boundaries because you had the opposite experience in your childhood. You weren't given everything that you wanted and instead you were taught to not have any boundaries for yourself. Which is why these types of personalities will typically walk all over you and leave you to rot. Just because they can and because people let them get away with it. But the reality is that they are no good for this world. They impair the evolution of our humanity because they only care about themselves. They're not concerned about the feelings, wants or needs of other people. And they typically run good hearted people into the ground. Which ironically enough is a self destructive behaviour. Because they need people like us in order for them to survive. Which is why as time goes by. And with the public awareness of this disorder. We are going to be seeing more and more collapsed narcissists. Narcissists who have lost the ability to uphold their grandiose image. Because as Dr. Ramani stated in a recent video, one in six people are narcissists. Which means people who have full-blown narcissistic personality disorder. That doesn't include covert narcissists or those who are narcissistic. And then there's also all of the other cluster B disorders. While true empaths are very rare. So there's far more of them than there are of us. Which is why smear campaigns and gang stalking are becoming more and more common. Where narcissists are left to share a single empath with all of their millions. Researchers from the University of York discovered that prehistoric humans had a deep sense of compassion and cared for each other. But in the, in the past four decades... Researchers have concluded that empathy has eroded around us overall, with the average person in 2009 being less empathic than 75% of individuals in 1979, which may also make it even more difficult for narcissists to survive. Because according to a 2007 study on empathy, published in Nature Neuroscience, only 1-2% to of the population consists of true empaths, which is making it very difficult for narcissists to get by. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Hit the subscribe button to receive the notifications. If you would like to support the channel, you can donate at paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. You can book a one-on-one -on -one with me on my website. It is narcsurvivor.co.uk Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.